Good evening, hello and welcome to this Wex Talk. My name is Carl Hare and I'm Fujifilm UK's videography specialist. It's my job to teach, train and talk about everything videography with the Fujifilm X and GFX series of cameras and lenses. Now, it's been an extremely challenging year for everyone, what with all the restrictions that have been put in place and we've all had to change the way that we work and connect with each other. But using apps such as Zoom, Google Hangouts, Microsoft Teams that online connection has never really been easier. So whether you're going for an online job interview or you just want to look great for your friends and family, I'm going to give you my top tips for getting the best out of your camera equipment when using video conferencing apps or working from home. So always look at your background. We don't want any distractions such as shelves, ornaments, plants poking out the top of your head, etc. This can be a really quick and easy way to make your videos look more polished. This also goes for any food and drink packages or rubbish on your desk. This is my background in my office. It's full of shelves, storage boxes, camera equipment, video equipment. So I generally turn the camera around and film from the side to get rid of those distractions. If you have a room in your house that gets a lot of light all the time, then think about closing the curtains to cut down on the contrast of the lighting. Try and make it so that the extra light from outside doesn't become distracting. In my little office space, I shut the windows, the blinds and the curtains to try and cut down the ambient light as much as I can. That way I can concentrate on my main light and my background light. Another little hint is just to think about how long your call is actually going to be. You might need to have some extra fully charged batteries for your camera or for your lighting to hand if it's going to be a long call. You could also plug your lights and cameras into mains power if needed, depending on the camera and the light that you've got. Have a few spares to hand. You know, try and think about everything that could go wrong. Have a spare HDMI cable, a spare charging cable, a spare set of headphones if needed. You know, things can happen and you need to be ready if something does or, you know, in the unfortunate event that a piece of equipment malfunctions. And finally, beginner hint number four, and this is probably the most crucial tip I can give you. And if you only take one tip away from this video, then please, please, please make sure it's this one check everything works before you start your video call. I can't tell you how many times I've been shooting, doing a video call, and I forgot to start the camera rolling, forgot to turn the camera on, I forgot to turn the microphone on, things like that. Things do happen, you get distracted, but just do a quick test before you go live just to check everything's okay. So now, onto the main part of the video. Tip number one is moving the camera above eye level or between eye and nose level rather than have a camera look up at you that a webcam from a MacBook or a laptop would. Now, you can either use things like a stack of books, a tripod, tripod table, anything that will just get the camera up off the ground. I'm sure you know what I mean, but just to give you an example, here we go. Uh, I'm sure we've seen this all before. It's not a good look. This was me just messing around earlier today. It's not a great look. So getting that camera up to eye level, such as we've got here, I've got the camera between my nose and my eyes, gives me a nice vantage point looking directly into the camera lens and it doesn't get these weird shadows under my chin, under my eyes, above the hood of my eyes, etc. So that's my first tip, is moving the camera to chin or nose level rather than looking down at the camera or the camera looking up at you. Tip number two is lighting. Lighting is the key to anything in videography and photography. And as you can see, I'm being lit on the side by my lovely LED panel. I have some background lights as well, just for effect. Uh, you don't need all of this. We can use things like window light. Now, the one thing I will say with window light is make sure it's not behind you. Put it in front of you. I'll show you a video just so you know what I mean. Here I am again. This was again from this morning, just to show you guys, uh, give you an example. And let's play the video. And there we go. So all I did was spin round, have the light facing me, lit me lovely, window light is great. You don't have to go out and buy all the bells and whistles. Um, window light is fantastic. We use it a lot in photography and videography, but it just gives you that next, next level uh, image for your video conferencing apps. 
If you have it the other way around, as you saw in the video, you'll be silhouetted and it'll make the background very, very bright and we won't be able to see you, the person, talking on the Zoom call. Using external lighting is great, improves your videography, improves your photography, makes your, your pictures and your video less grainy and look more professional. If you want to use something that you've already got at home, maybe a desk lamp, we can move the desk lamp closer to you just out of shot of the camera. Uh, but just remember with a standard incandescent bulb, you will need to change your white balance in the camera, otherwise you may look a little bit orange. You could change the bulb as well to a daylight balance lamp, which is 5600 Kelvin. These also make great accent lights in the backgrounds of your shots. If you want to take it up another notch again, we can use an LED panel. These are relatively inexpensive and they come in lots of different sizes. It's actually what I'm using now to light me in this video. Uh, I'm using one that I got off of Amazon. This is a, a Viltrox VL200. Uh, it's bi-colour. It enables me to have daylight balance, warm white, or a mixture of the two, depending on my situation. For most videos though, I will shoot in the daylight balanced, which is 5600 Kelvin, and I will go into the camera and change the white balance as well. These LED panels can be used for more than just video though, and there are lots of different brands such as Nanguang, Viltrox, Rotolite, etc. And you can get them with different coloured lights. Warm white, bicolour, daylight. They can come with diffusers, which make the light more soft, and diffuse, which is what I'm using at the moment. The next step up is a big LED monoblock light. These are generally larger lights and can take up lots of room, but they do have the added benefit of being able to change the modifiers, making them bigger, smaller. We can have softer light, harder light, uh, but they're quite big, they take up quite a lot of room. So if like me, you live in a flat, I have a small office space, I like to use the small LED panels. I can tuck them out of the way, put them away and get back to having a normal office when I need it. The next thing to talk about is your audio. Uh, being able to see the person is great using the lighting and maybe even just the webcam on your uh, laptop, MacBook, etc. But being able to hear someone is even more critical, especially if you're doing things like a presentation or you're going for a job interview online. That's the key. So we can use an external microphone now, whether that's built into a set of headphones or a dedicated mic, which will give you a richer tone, more clarity and better sound quality. Uh, today I'm using an external mic. I'm actually using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus boomed above my head. There we go. Get it in the shot. And uh, this mic has lots of independent features. It means I can do things, put it into different mixers into the computer. We can also use things like the Rode NT-USB desktop microphone, which can be used with other audio software. Um, that's really great because it's USB and it's plug and play with most computers. My next tip is to get the microphone off of your desk. There is nothing more annoying than hearing the clickety clack of your keyboard. I've got the microphone boomed above my head on a microphone boom arm. It's literally just out of the shot, probably only six or seven inches away from my face. I could also wear a lapel mic, which can radio signal into the camera. Um, I prefer the wired in mics, just gives me a little bit of better sound. The other thing you might need to do is changing your audio settings on your computer to look for the microphone as an audio input. Uh, you can do this in the settings tab in all laptops, MacBooks, everything like that. Once we've got our uh, microphone plugged into our camera. We can use lots of different programs and external audio devices for improving the sound, such as the Rode Procaster, the Behringer UMC22 audio interface, or the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. These are great to plug lots of microphones in and change the settings to get that richer tone if you need to. We can also turn the microphones up, down, as needed, and we can also do that in the camera as well. Now, the biggest part of this video is talking about the camera. So you've got your lighting, you've got your audio, and now we need to look our absolute best. So how can we get the best out of a camera? Well, depends on what camera you're using. Now, the inbuilt webcam for your laptop is okay, as you've seen in the little inserts that we've put in this video. Um, they're much more useful if you're on the move, uh, but a dedicated high-res webcam is better. I'm currently using the Fujifilm X-T4 over here as camera one, but we can do lots of other things. A dedicated webcam is great, 4K, 1080, high res, they're small, they're lightweight, and generally they're plug and play, and you can use external microphones and lighting with them. 
If you want to take it up another notch though, I would recommend using a dedicated camera. So as I said, I'm using the Fujifilm X-T4 and uh, we can use webcams with, with all of our cameras really. Uh, Fujifilm brought out uh, a couple of months ago Fujifilm X webcam uh, and this is available from everything from the X-T200, the X-A7, right up to the GFX 50R 50S and GFX 100. The beauty of webcam mode on the X-T200 and the X-A7 is it is plug and play via the USB connection and we can go in and change the settings by going to menu, spanner, connection settings, USB and changing that to Fujifilm X webcam. Fujifilm X webcam for the X-T200 and X-A7 is a great starting point. Uh, it enables us to just use the camera, plug and play over USB um, and plug that into our computers and use that as a webcam. We do need to change a few settings though, so in the camera you'll need to go to menu, the spanner button, we go into uh, connection settings, USB and change that to Fujifilm X webcam. Then we need to look for that in our chosen software, so whether that's Zoom, Google Hangouts, uh, Microsoft Teams etc, we need to tell that that we're using the XA7 or the X-T200. Now also with that there are lots of settings that are locked in the camera, you don't get full manual control. So to change the brightness or the exposure we need to use the exposure compensation. Face and eye autofocus is on, I've got this on on the X-T4, it's just nice to follow me around and I should be in focus most of the time. The pre-AF is always on and the Provia film simulation is on. The rear LCD turns off and unfortunately you cannot power the camera via USB uh, because you're using that as a connection to the computer so you do need a fully charged battery. The next step up is Fujifilm X webcam and that is a dedicated program. Uh, we can use this with most of the cameras, I'll show you how to download that now. Let's cut to the laptop and let's go picture in picture. You should see here we're at fujifilm-x.com and all we need to do is go to support and download, go to software Fujifilm X webcam and this is great because it gives you an overview of uh, what you can actually do. It'll also give you the compatibility chart. So this gives us compatibility with our operating system, so Windows, Mac and it also tells us which cameras we are compatible with in the software as well. So as you can see everything from the newly announced XS10 to the older Fujifilm X-T2, 3, 4, Pro 2, Pro 3, X-H1 and the three GFX models, the 50R, the 50S and the GFX100. We can scroll down and it will give you details of this software update for Windows and for Mac as well. Tells you how to install it, all your system requirements and downloads etc etc. I'm not going to download it because I already have it on my computer. It's quite simple once you've downloaded it. So we need to go in and change the settings on the camera for your computer to actually see the camera as well. Once that's done we can fire up Fujifilm X webcam and it gives us lots and lots of options. As you can see we can change lots of things like the exposure compensation, film simulation and the white balance for the lights that you're using all dependent on how you've got your setup set up really. Um, so that's a, a basic introduction to Fujifilm X webcam. I'll give you a few little basic video settings as well just in a second. So my basic video settings are 1080p on the camera, full HD, 25 frames a second and using the Eterna film simulation with a few subtle tweaks. But I'll show you how I set up my camera now. Here we are then, this is the menu of my Fujifilm X-T3, just because I'm using my X-T4 to film this video on. Uh, and as you can see, lots and lots of settings in the video menu. Uh, if I go into movie mode, I'll change this to Full HD, 1080p, 25 frames a second. Bitrate doesn't really matter for using as a webcam, it would do for recording standard video. Movie compression, all like this just enables me to record all of the frames, not drop any, not get any jittering, stuttering, etc. Film simulation is Eterna. This is our soft colour and rich film movie look. Uh, it's lovely for filming skin tone, headshots, that kind of thing. White balance is going to be dependent on your light. I'm shooting with 5600 Kelvin as that's the Kelvin value of the light that I'm currently using. 
Highlight tone minus one, shadow tone plus two. This just boosts the black areas. Color plus one. I like to add a little bit more color into the Eterna film simulation. And sharpness and noise reduction. Generally, I shoot this with minus two to zero, depending on how I've got my setup set up. In this one, sharpness down to minus two. Uh, I don't need to be uh, full detail um, because I'm using it as a webcam. It doesn't need to be full production 4K. Uh, I don't shoot in log or hybrid log gamma either. And autofocus is a good area to talk talk upon. So how do I shoot headshots and things like that? Well, I shoot with movie AF in area like I would my stills. And then I go in and tweak the autofocus custom settings. And I do tracking sensitivities plus one. This just makes the camera a little bit quicker for if I'm gesture to you guys. Autofocus speed, I turn down to minus two. And this just enables the camera to keep up and it makes the focus pull look more natural rather than snapping into focus like a lot of webcams do. Face and eye detection is set to on. This will enable the camera to follow me around my scene and then the rest of the video settings uh, we don't really need to worry about. Output info display I've turned on on this X-T3 just so you guys can see it so it comes across into the piece of software that I'm using. Um, and then audio settings. If I'm using an external microphone, I like to increase the external microphone, boost that there, because that's what the microphone is designed to do. And then I can turn the audio down in the camera and uh, just get it to a level that I'm comfortable with. So generally between minus 18 and minus 27, somewhere around there, gives me great audio sound and it doesn't become too noisy and you don't pick up all the hisses and stuff that you might have around. So there we have it. There's a few little basic settings from my camera. Take that what you will. Try and implement it in your video as well. So now we've got our setup, we've got our camera, our lens, our lighting, our audio. How do we connect that to our computer? Well, we can use either a USB cable if you're using Fujifilm X webcam, or another option is to use something like the Elgato CamLink 4K. I have one here. It's a great little device. It just enables me to plug most cameras into most computers. Uh, it's got a little HDMI port on one end, a USB port on the other. It's very small, very lightweight, and it just enables me to connect different cameras, single cameras into a single computer so I can use this uh, pretty much like I'm using camera one here, the X-T4. I could do this with the uh, El Ghetto CamLink 4K. Around £120 in the UK, great, great option. The next option is the one that I've been tinkering around with a lot over the last week. This is the Blackmagic Atom Mini, and this can use most modern cameras with most modern laptops and computers, but it enables me to switch between four different independent HDMI inputs. So that's how I've been able to share the screen, the camera, and go back to this camera as well. They're the two bits of kit I recommend if you're gonna plug your cameras into your computer. We've got the basic Fujifilm X webcam. We've got the X-T200 and X-A7 with the Fujifilm USB webcam. We've got dedicated webcams. We've got dedicated cameras and things like the CamLink 4K and the Atom Mini. So I just thought I'd run you through my little setup for this video uh, this evening. This is quite a big setup. It's not really needed for a Zoom call, but I'm sure some of you might be interested to know. So I've currently got the Fujifilm X-T4 with the XF 23mm 1.4 lens with eye autofocus, which is doing a good job of tracking me around the frame. I've got an LED panel, which is a Viltrox VL200T, and I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus boomed over my head on a boom arm. But you may have also noticed that I've got an extra light in the background over here and an extra camera up here. This is an X-T3 with a 16mm f1.4, and I'll switch to that and I'll run you through my setup. So here we go, this is the behind view, there we go. And uh, this just gives me a good chance to show you how I've got everything connected and why uh, I've got certain things connected the way. I've just gone in picture in picture there so you can see me a little bit better. Um, but the X-T4 over here, this is camera one, 
Again, got the 23mm 1.4. This is on a Manfrotto Nitrotech N8 video tripod. This is a specialised videography tripod. Not necessary for uh, doing zoom calls and things like that, but I do a lot of videography as well um, for Fujifilm and for other various people. So it's nice to have a dedicated video tripod that's sturdy enough to take the kit that I need. Over here, if I move out of the way, this is my Viltrox VL200T. It's lovely, it's bi-colour. It was about £65. I got it from Amazon. I mean, I can turn it up and down on the back of the light as well. There we go. I can turn the light on, turn the light off. And I'm using this, obviously, as the key light to light me. I can turn the brightness up and down with the remote, and I can turn the Kelvin value up and down to be warmer or cooler. Overhead, I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is connected to a power bank and that's powering the microphone. I've also got it on a spring-loaded boom arm just to get it off of the desk like we spoke about before. The cable goes all the way around that and is plugged directly into the X-T4, so directly connected. It means I'm not getting any sync issues. I don't have any drift with audio. Um, what you see is what you get. I've currently got that set with plus 20 dB, so it's just boosting the signal from the microphone. It's a great, great microphone and a great ability to do that. About around £200. Uh, you can also use this as a shotgun microphone on top of your cameras if you're out doing any vlogs, blogs and things like that. Two light stands, one holding the light, one holding the microphone. The one holding the microphone has a tripod table on the top. That's all connected together by a very serious set of cables. And from the X-T4 I've got a micro HDMI to standard HDMI and that goes down here into the Blackmagic 8M Mini. I've then got a HDMI out onto the Ninja 5, which enables me to give a, a preview and see what I'm doing. It also enables me to record the session. I can then drag footage across into the laptop as needed. So as you can see, I've got quite a small setup enabling me to shoot live stream videos, YouTube videos, but also product videos and things like that from home. It's overkill for shooting a Zoom call, a Google Hangouts team meeting. With that, I would probably just use a camera, maybe a small light like I have in the background here. Uh, this one was from Amazon. This is the Vigim VL120. It's bicolour uh, and it comes with this lovely soft diffuser as well. I would probably use something like that one camera, one lens, and connect that via HDMI uh, using the Fujifilm X webcam software into my laptop, and away you go. So that's a little bit about my setup, what I use, why I might use it. Uh, I'm going to run through three little setups from what I would consider good, better, best uh, for video calls for Zoom, and I'll pop that up on the screen in just a minute. So here we have the most cost-effective setup for if you're just started working from home. I've got a MacBook or a laptop, anything to run the Zoom call and add all your accessories to. I've got a small LED light. This is the Vigium VL120 that I mentioned in the video before. I think it was around £40 from Amazon in the UK. It's a great light, small and lightweight, and you can take it anywhere. Then we need a set of headphones. I've got the Apple headphones and a, a little case there with some wireless headphones. These both have an inbuilt mic, a great way to get started. And then finally, the little accessory is a, an action camera suction cup. It's how we attach cameras in cars and things like that. But it's been really useful to attach the small LED light onto the back lid of my laptop. Failing that, you could also use a small uh, mini tripod such as the Manfrotto Pixie or a small Gorillapod. I still have the MacBook or the laptop, which I can connect all my accessories to and run the call. I've got my small LED light from the setup before. The headphones are the same as well. But I'm adding an external microphone. This is the Rode NT-USB. It's great to have as a desktop microphone. Comes with a very long cable, has its own stand, and it enables you to actually plug headphones into the microphone to have live monitoring as well. You can also see a small Manfrotto tripod there, which I could use to either attach the light or the microphone onto the desk. And last but not least, rounding up with everything we've talked about in this video so far, I've got my MacBook or laptop, I've got my small LED light, I've got the microphone, the Rode NT-USB, I've got my small tripod to attach the light to or the microphone, I've got my headphones, I've got a set of wireless headphones there if needed, but I'm also utilising a, a micro HDMI to HDMI cable, the Elgato Camlink 4K, a Fujifilm XS10 
with the XF 35mm f2 lens. This enables me to get fantastic image quality. I can use it with the cam link. I can also use it with the HDMI cable if needed and run the system through Fujifilm X webcam. So you've got your camera, you've got your lens, you've got your lighting, you've got your audio equipment. What next? Well, practice makes perfect. So put it all together, have a play, maybe do a Zoom call with friends and family just to test out different bits of kit that you've got. And most importantly, have fun. Doing it with your family makes it a lot easier so that if you are working from home and you can connect all the bits up, then uh, you look more professional and get the best out of your equipment. Remember everyone, there's gonna be a Q&A after the video where I'll try and answer your questions live about getting the best out of your equipment when working from home. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more from Fujifilm UK, please subscribe to our social media, Facebook, Instagram. It's at FujifilmX underscore UK. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.